I'm Emily Lockwood, Specialist Respiratory Physiotherapist at Air Physiotherapy, and we run clinics here at One Welbeck Lung Health. Put simply, respiratory physiotherapy is physiotherapy for the breathing system. Breathing is something that we all take for granted. However, many people experience unpleasant and frightening symptoms in relation to their breathing. As respiratory physiotherapists, it's our job to help these patients by removing their troublesome symptoms and helping them to get back to doing the things that they want to do. As respiratory physios, we also have a thorough understanding of the way that the heart and lungs work together so that we can provide safe and effective treatment for these patients. We see patients with underlying lung conditions to help reduce their symptoms of breathlessness and to help them be as active as possible. And conditions might include COPD, bronchiectasis, asthma, or IPF. We also see patients with perfectly healthy lungs, yet they still experience symptoms of breathlessness. And these patients may have something called a breathing pattern disorder, which is when the mechanics or the way that somebody breathes becomes disrupted. And this can lead to frightening and quite disabling symptoms in some cases. And respiratory physio in this sense will essentially reteach somebody how to breathe optimally. We also see patients with long COVID. And for these patients, we will help them to regain control of their breathing and we will also help gradually increase their physical activity in a safe and controlled manner. For these patients, it's really important that they have an individualized approach with close monitoring because it's really easy for these patients to overdo it. Patients can self-refer to us or they can be referred via their GP or consultant or referrals can come directly through One Welbeck. The aim of respiratory physiotherapy treatment is to help and encourage patients to lead an active and independent lifestyle that is free of troublesome symptoms. Now treatment can take several different paths depending on the patient's underlying complaint or their lung underlying lung condition. As an example, treatment might include reteaching somebody how to breathe optimally so that they can take adequate and satisfying breaths rather than breathing with the top part of their chest. And this top heavy way of breathing can sometimes occur in situations when we get stressed or anxious, but it can also occur after a period of illness. We can also help patients to become more confident when exercising. Um, so we can prescribe appropriate physical and breathing exercises for these patients so that they're exercising safely. And we can also prescribe breathing exercises to patients to help clear their lungs of secretions. So we call this airway clearance techniques. And this is particularly beneficial for those patients who experience recurrent chest infections. So my top five tips for lung health are, number one, nasal breathing. So breathing through the nose has several benefits. Um, the first one being that it humidifies the air that we breathe. So this prevents our airways from drying out. And it also controls the speed of the breath. And it also encourages lower chest, so diaphragmatic breathing. So tip number two is to stay active. So if you haven't already got an activity tracker, then maybe think about buying one. You can get lots maybe in the form of um, a watch nowadays. Um, and this is because the World Health Organization recommends that we all undertake 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity per week. And this is for patients with underlying conditions as well. So this amounts to roughly 30 minutes of exercise five days a week, and this could consist of going for a brisk walk. So tip number three is to take time out for yourself. 
So we all spend a lot of time charging around, not really taking much time out to focus on ourselves. So tip number three is to take 10 minutes out of your busy day, um, lying down or sitting in a chair and really relaxing and thinking about your breathing. Now the benefit of this is that it switches on our rest and digest or parasympathetic nervous system and this can reduce our respiratory rate, so that's the number of breaths that you take per minute and it can also reduce our heart rate amongst other things. Tip number four is have a good posture. So a slouched, poor posture has um, several negative effects on our breathing in the fact that it compresses our rib cage. So the rib cage can't expand adequately and therefore the diaphragm, which is one of the main respiratory muscles, can't descend properly. And what this means is that the lungs can't fill adequately. So to have a good posture, you should sit without your legs crossed, bottom back in the back of the chair, um, and you should have a natural lumbar curve. So that means a curve at the base of your spine. And this will help keep your shoulders back and keep you sitting up nice and tall. And some people roll up a small towel or they have something called a lumbar roll just to support that natural curvature in the base of the spine and that can really help. So tip number five is to avoid catching coughs and colds as much as you can. So having a cough or a cold or an, or an infection, particularly a respiratory infection, will put added strain on the lungs and this means that our breathing will be affected. So during the winter seasons in particular, my recommendation would be to practice adequate hand hygiene and just be sensible in terms of where you're going, avoiding busy places if it's the time of year, year where people have got coughs and colds um, and just being sensible in that regard. So at Air Physiotherapy, we provide face-to-face -face consultations in clinic-based settings, and we can also offer virtual consultations so that even if you don't live close to one of our clinics, you can access our services and our specialism wherever you are in the world. So if you've watched this video and you think that respiratory physiotherapy might be for you and might be able to help your symptoms, then do get in touch.